Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Akram and you are watching Knowledge360. In the previous video, we had discussed about dependency tracking in PostgreSQL database. And in this video, we are going to cover the data manipulation in PostgreSQL. And in the first video, we will cover inserting data in PostgreSQL. So when a table is created, it is initially empty. So to populate it, we use the insert statement in PostgreSQL to insert the data into the table. So the data is inserted row by row, but multiple rows can also be added in a single command. So we will see all of these things with examples. So let's start with the basic basic insert syntax the basic insert syntax is like this insert into the table name and then the list of columns and then the keyword values and then within the parenthesis then a list of values okay so this is the basic syntax of insert statement and this is applicable to other relational databases as well along with the postgresql in case we don't mention the column names in the insert statement then the values must be in the same order uh, of the columns and omitting some columns fills them with default values so let's start with examples so first we create one table called products table where we have three columns one is product number and then the name and then the price so here you can see that uh, product number is the primary key and then the name name of the product and the price is a numeric value and the default value is 1.00 so let's create the table called products the table is created now let's insert one data and this is the basic insert syntax insert into the table name then the list of columns then the values keyword and then the list of values so let's insert the data so the data is inserted and also in the other way we can insert the data where we do not mention the column names so in that case we need to specify all the values in the same order the column names are specified so let's insert another record so as of now two records are inserted into the products table so let's check the data the data is written and here we can see that we have inserted two record into the products table so next we'll see the inserting with default values so if some columns are omitted their default values will be used so how default values are taken so in the create statement you can see the product number default value is the serial value so this is the default value the default number will be generated one two three four and like that and for the name we have a default value called generic product and for the price column we have a default value is as 1.00 so let's try inserting some default value and there are a number of ways to insert default values so first let's insert a default value where we are inserting product num number and product name but we haven't mentioned the product price so the product price should be 1.00 as per the default value so let's insert this one so the data is inserted and now we can check the data from the products table and here we can see the data of product milk is inserted with uh, the value 1.00 and also it is possible to insert all the default values so in that case we don't mention any values in the values uh, list so let's try to insert this data so the data is inserted and we can see here the product name with the generic product that is the default product name is inserted into the table now let's see how we can insert multiple records into the products table or any table in postgresql that is called the batch insert statement so earlier we saw that uh, we need to insert single single insert insert statement so we can omit that and we can write batch inserts like this insert into product name then the columns in the value section we can uh, mention any number of values with uh, separated by comma so here we are uh, inserting uh, the values from primary key 5 to primary key 11 so let's insert the data at a time so all the data are inserted at a time so why is this approach is better so there are two benefits of it so first it reduces the number of individual insert commands that minimizes the transaction overhead and the second benefit is that it is faster than executing multiple insert statement separately so here we'll create a new table called new products to show the example of how we can insert the data by selecting the data from another table so let's create a, the table called new product the table is created and now let's insert some data into the newly created table using the batch inserts 
so the 10 records are inserted into the new products and we can verify that so here we can see the data are inserted now let's insert the data into the products table by selecting the data from the new products so this type of insert statement we called insert into select so based on the condition of uh, the data or we can omit this condition as well so there are some records that are returned through this uh, criteria and we can insert all the data as it is into the product table because we know that we have created uh, with the similar syntax and the attributes of a new products that is similar to the products table so let's insert and then we saw that eight records are inserted into the products table so we can verify that so here we can see that uh, these data are taken from the new products table initially they were not the part of the products table this type of insert statement is efficient in the bulk inserts for large data sets so this is how we can insert the data by selecting from another table so now let's see the efficient bulk inserts so for large data sets we can use the copy command instead of uh, insert command for better performance so i'll show you the example of the copy command so before that let's uh, delete the all the data from the products table the data are deleted from the products table and then we'll use the copy command so before deleting the products table i have already taken the backup of uh, the products table and here we have eight records into the products uh, file that is the .csv file so I'll try to copy this CSV file into the products table and there are number of ways how we can do it so I'll show one example of it by using the GUI also from PG admin we can do it so right click on the table name and then go to the import export data option so here you can select the option of import because we are going to import the data and in the browse section and go and select the file that uh, you want to copy so click on OK and then the format is CSV and other options are by default so you can leave them so and then click on OK so the data process started and the process is completed so we can verify that so here we can see that uh, products table got uh, this data inserted and also if I want to do it using the command so I can do it so I have deleted the data and for using the command I can use the copy command the copy command is uh, like this copy the product name from then the file path where the file is uh, located and then the delimiter so in my CSV file the delimiter is uh, comma so if uh, it's a tab or it's a semicolon or anything else for your file you can mention that and then the CSV header so now I can execute this copy command the copy command is executed and I can show you the data so here we can see the data are inserted into the table so this is how the copy command is used to insert the bulk data which is in a file or it can be csv file now let's see how we can use the returning keyword to get the inserted id so this will return the product number as we have mentioned here of newly inserted data so now let's insert a data into the products table and returning the product number so let's insert it so the data is inserted and we can see the product number that is written is 5 because the newly generated product number for this insert statement is 5 so this is useful when we do the insert statement using stored procedure or function and where we need the newly inserted product number or the primary key or whatever values that we insert so this is useful in that case and next to show the default expression let's create a, a table called order with a default uh, timestamp order date so I have two column here order ID as the primary key which is serial and then order date that is the timestamp and default is the current timestamp so let's create the table called orders the order table is created and also we can insert the data into the orders and here also we can uh, use the returning and if we mention the asterisk that means we want to get back all the data in return so here we have mentioned the product number instead of product number we can mention asterisk that will return the complete row so let's do it so here we have inserted one record into the table and here we can see the current timestamp is returned and using this statement we can insert one more data inserted multiple record into the table called orders and every time we insert the current timestamp is taken and the order id is getting generated by default 
and now let's see how we can handle the conflicts uh, during the insert statement in PostgreSQL. There are multiple ways to handle it. So the first way is if a, a conflict occurs due to duplicate product number, it will ignore the insert. So let's try to perform this insert statement since I have already cleared the products table. So it will be the first record that is getting inserted into the products table. So I can select the data from the products table. Here we can see that one record is inserted with the product number one. So what will happen if I try to insert the same record but without using this uh, on conflict resolution so it will give me error correct so this uh, through an error of uh, product key violation so how we can handle this so for that there are multiple ways the first way is uh, to handle it on conflict the product number do nothing that means uh, it will not throw error but the insert statement will be ignored so let's try to do it so we have tried to insert the data but uh, we are not getting error and also here we can see the insert statement is uh, getting with 00, zero records so that means zero records are affected and zero records are inserted so if i query again from the products table so we can see there is only one record present so another way of uh, to handle the conflict is that if uh, the conflict occurs it will update the existing record instead of uh, ignoring it or instead of throwing error it will update the existing record so uh, how we can do it it is like a kind of merge statement uh, in oracle and other databases so how we can do it using the insert command so same record will insert with a new value 19.99 instead of the existing value 9.99 so on conflict it is the on conflict value is the product number that means the it will check uh, if the product number is same then what it will do it will not ignore but it will update the record and here we can set the price and exclude it dot price that means that whatever the new value that is coming with uh, the price column it will be updated so let's try to insert the data so we have inserted the data and now we can see that uh, the record is same but uh, the value of the price column is updated so this is how we can handle the conflicts in PostgreSQL inserts so now let's see how we can insert the data using the unnest function this unnest function is useful with the dynamic data insertion because whenever we don't know the how many insert statement or how many insert records are there so the example of this unnest function it can be like this insert into product table and then the columns and in the select statement we can use the unnest function the arrays are there so 8 9 10 is the first uh, uh, column values the second value is the apples bananas and orange and the third value are the prices so let's insert this data into the product table so the data are inserted into the product table and we can verify that data so we can see that new data are inserted into the product table so as we discussed the unnest function is useful for inserting large data sets that is dynamically generated and where we don't know the exact limit of the data now let's see how we can insert the json data into postgresql database json itself is a large topic in postgresql because we have json data type we have json functions so json things we'll cover in details in upcoming videos when we cover the json objects and json data type json functions etc so for now let's create a table called customers where we have two columns one is id and the second column is info and the data type of it is json so let's create the table called customers the table is created and now we can insert the data into the customers table as like this so insert into the table so the data is inserted and we can query the data and here we can see that one record is inserted and the data is inserted in the format of json so how we can read the json data and how we can manipulate it in postgresql we'll cover them upcoming videos when we cover the json topics so in this video we have covered the insert statement in postgresql so before ending this tutorial let's uh, cover some performance tips for insert statement in postgresql the first is using the copy command when large data sets are there to insert instead of using multiple insert statement and then we should use the batch inserts 
using multi row values and then using the unnest function for inserting the dynamic data and we should temporarily disable the indexes when inserting massive amount of data to improve the insertion speed in PostgreSQL tables and last is using the on conflict to handle the duplicate records efficiently as we have covered in the video so this was all about the insert statement and insert options in PostgreSQL database if the video was helpful do like the video and subscribe the channel to get the notifications for upcoming videos in the next video we'll cover the topic of updating data in PostgreSQL database so let's meet in the next video till then take care bye bye